Hi guys, welcome back to Mr. Moves Models. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. This is a, a video response video to two guys, uh, Brian at BG Models Workshop and Charlie Mack. Um, now I've recently found these guys on YouTube last couple of days, started following them, they've got some great work out there. Go and check them out if you haven't already seen them. Um, and yeah, so th th they're all very nice guys. The two videos, they sort of done two different videos which were kind of correlated together. Uh, and the first one was Brian at BG Models Workshop did a video uh, which was basically if you had to leave your house in case of emergency, sort of like earthquake, end of the world, you know it kind of scenarios, doomsday, blah blah blah, which five kits from your stash would you take with you? Um, I think this is a really interesting question actually because we've all got stashes of various sizes. I mean, there are a few exceptions out there of people who just buy a kit, build it, buy a new kit, build it, and so forth, but most of us get a stash. Uh, and they can be sort of a few kits all the way up to hundreds of kits. Like in my case, I've got about 50 kits or so, which is more than enough for a lifetime, apparently. Um, but still, you know, if I did need to whittle it down for whatever reason, like I was leaving the house and we moved house somewhere where I haven't got anywhere to to store the kits or I needed some money, etc., then I would whittle it down to about five kits. So these are the five kits I would keep. So I'm going to go through those in order now. Uh, and show you and explain why. First kit I'd keep would be this Hazagawa 172 scale Eurofighter Typhoon single seater. Uh, the reason I do this is um, they can be quite hard to find over here in Europe and quite expensive. I got this one diet from Japan at a reasonable price and I love the Typhoon and this comes out with uh, all the pylons that you need it to represent a proper FGR4. So that's the first kit I'd keep. Second kit I'd keep is this 12144 scale um, handy page Victor. Uh, oh, is a handy page, yeah, handy page Victor uh, B2. The reason I keep this one, uh, this kit used to belong to Mr. Phil Floy uh, of Floy Models, um, and I bought it off him second hand. Uh, well, I actually bought it at one of their evening auctions, uh, so it's just got a little bit of an emotional attachment to it. So it's been reviewed by him, it's online, uh, and this kit is now a mustache, so that's why I keep that one. The third kit that I'd keep, and this is cheating a little bit, would be this Edouard uh, Royal Combo, Royal Class Combo uh, of the Spitfire Mark 9 in 172 scale. Now this has got four kits in it, uh, it's got all your uh, goodies aftermarket stuff, so uh, photo etch, resins, masks, I've uh, got loads of decor options on it, um, and I got this for uh, a very good price from Mr Mike Jolly a few years ago, so that's why I keep this on, just because it's a beast of a kit and so much value for money. The fourth kit that I would keep would be this one here. So uh, Tamiya's 148 scale uh, F14 Tomcat D, relatively recent, well, really recently released. Uh, beast of a kit, looks absolutely gorgeous in there, and uh, is pride and joy of my collection. So that's why I'd keep that one. And the last kit that I'd keep is going to be this Avro Lancaster uh, B3 Special Dambusters from Airfix in 70 second scale. The reason I keep this one is this is a present from my uh, wife, well at the time she was my girlfriend, um, and then became fiance and then wife, and this kind of got the ball rolling into getting back to the hobby seriously for me. And I haven't built it yet simply because I want to do it justice and um, I just haven't got around to it. I don't feel ready for doing it yet. So it's that then stash, and I will do it. I promise, Law, I will build it at some point. Uh, and that's what I keep it up for the emotional aspect. So what I'm going to do now is point the camera down at the bench, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll point the camera down at the bench and then I'm going to go through the five kit, completed kits that I would take with me and as to why I'd take those ones over others. So, the five completed builds that I'll take with me. Um, this was a little bit more of a challenge, well, not a different kind of challenge because as much as like with the, the, the kits and the stash that I take, I'm going to sort of look at like, oh, that's nice and Gucci, that's a big one, that's why I'm taking it. Sometimes in, in your built kits, the ones that you completed, it's not necessarily the ones which are, shall we say, the best that you want to take with you. Anyway, the first one I'd take would be this. This is uh, an Airfix 172 scale uh, Spitfire. 
this is the old old tooling kit and the reason I take this one with me is that this was actually um, a Christmas present from my in-laws uh, and I built it a while ago and I just had a blast enjoying it uh, it's one of the first kits I airbrushed um, and it, it's not amazing but I was quite happy at the time and since then the skills have progressed and there's minimal weathering on it, a bit of staining on the exhaust and on the gun ports but you know there's plenty where it could be better but like underneath there it's just sky it's not stained or anything but I really like it so that's my first kit second kit I'll take with me I'm going to have to back the camera out a little bit for this one I think there we go um, is this this is uh, a Tamiya 172 scale Tornado F3 uh, and the reason I take this kit um, once again not perfect far from it plenty of mistakes made on it um, this was one of the first kits I built uh, on YouTube uh, I did a, a full video build for this showing um, bits and bobs of it and the progress through, through the kit and I really had a blast building it and really enjoyed it um, I did a bit of scratch building uh, let me just see where we can bring you in so for example here I just did some scratch built fod covers uh, same on the rear of the aircraft, if we just bring you around. So, scratch built FOD covers there, and um, I just really enjoyed it. So, um, showing you the underneath, there we go. There we go. So, that one will definitely be coming with me. Next, next up, the next one I'll take with me is this little guy. In a square. This is a 172 scale Ravel EC135. Um, the reason I'll take this one with me is because this was the first um, build that I completed as part of a group build on the Floor Your Models website uh, and I got a medal for it. So that's the reason for taking that one. There's, a, there's plenty of mistakes once again on it, but I quite like it and quite happy that I finished the group build and I got a little medal for it, so that's why that one's coming with me. Next two, I might have to back out the camera again. There we go. This is one of them. This is a Airfix 172 scale uh, British Aerospace Hawk in red arrows markings. And the reason I'm taking this one is just uh, I was quite happy to gloss finish on it. I really enjoyed building it. Um, and the little sort of dio with it sort of flying above the, uh, the red arrows emblem. Uh, works for me and I really like it. So that one's coming with me. Just bring it around so you can see the other side of the kit. There we go. Let's try and get you to focus if we can. There we go. So it's just a, a different way of presenting the kit and I really enjoyed it. So that one's coming with us. And then the last one here is another in-flight diorama. This is uh, an Airfix 172 scale Harrier GR3. Um, this one I built for Martin Lamont. Uh, he did a buddy build for the Harrier. Um, so that's why this one's coming with us because I really enjoyed that. It was a great, great fun uh, build. Um, and had great fun building it and just it's something different with the LGB dropping away there um, the pictures Port Stanley underneath so yeah uh, I just quite enjoyed building that one I thought it's different and I'm quite proud of the way this one's turned out I'm quite happy with the result it's not perfect once again but I, I'm, I'm certainly happy it shows an evolution of the skills compared to the Spitfire which I saw earlier so those are the five uh, completed builds that I'm taking with me so just let me pop the camera back around to you and I'll say goodbye So guys, there you have the five kits from the stash that I'd take with me if I had to uh, leave the house uh, in a rush or if I had to reduce some stash. Um, and also the five completed builds that I'd also take with me. Um, I think it's quite a fun thing to do, just to have a look through uh, your, your stash and sort of think which are the most important kits to me. And also your completed builds which are the most um yeah, the most important which ones mean the most for you as you completed the build. Uh, thankfully, I haven't got that many to choose from. Uh, well, I've got, got a fair few, but 
I haven't got that many compared to some people. Um, but anyway, I've really enjoyed doing this video, it's good fun. Uh, and I think it's something where if you guys fancy taking up the challenge and sort of showing us around the kits which are in your stash that you, you would take with you, and uh, also your completed builds which you, you'd take with you. I know Al Woods also done a, a video along the same lines. Uh, so if we can get the ball rolling, and let, let's get plenty of videos made by people seeing us what your, your five most important kits are in the stash and also your five most important completed builds, that'd be grand. So I'm gonna wrap it up here now, um, guys and i will leave you to it as always saying thank you very much for uh the uh the subscribers uh those who like and comment and sort of uh give me sort of the uh the feedback it's always appreciated and makes me want to do more so uh with that i'm just going to say happy modeling guys i hope you all have a great weekend uh and i'll see you soon take care bye bye